Hey guys, welcome back. This is not something you've seen for a little while. I'm really trying to get down to do something that many of you have been asking for for a really long time. Um, people really want to see uh, from beginning to end Fusion 360 tutorial. All the way from the start of a design idea, all the way through modeling the complex features of the neck and um, doing uh, cam work on fretboards or arch tops or necks. Um, some of those complex features. I do share most of the files that I work with on the channel with my Patreon members. So if that's something you're interested in looking at, um, check it out. It's $1 a month and you get to see these finished files. You can build the same things that I build. But really, I want to educate you on how to do that with your own ideas, right? Um, so this is really what this is about. How to build a Fusion 360 file that gives you CAD and CAM that you can design and build these ideas that you have in your head and really make them come to life. So today we're going to cover like the very basic, how I get started with the very first steps of, uh, in, of starting a file, building a folder, bringing in my resources like my canvases, and starting my first sketch with my scale length and getting my canvases calibrated to the right size. Let's hop in over to Fusion 360 here. If you um, followed along with the build that I did for the double neck lap steel, I'm kind of continuing on that. I'm kind of continuing on that. I did a, I, I built the double neck and I've been asked to make a single neck version. So this is the drawing, the beginning of drawing for the single neck version. I'm not gonna be doing the same build throughout this whole series. I'm going to go with whatever I'm working on at the moment to kind of articulate the idea that I'm trying to get across. So this first video is really just the starting steps, how you start out. And the next video will go into all the different techniques I use in building sketches and how to do like proportional design. And we'll talk about uh, spline continuity. Um, later we'll get in more depth when we talk about surface continuity with meshes. Um, there's a whole lot of content to cover here. We'll go all the way from the very beginning steps to the end steps. I'm gonna try to move as slowly as possible to make this understandable as possible. If you have a question, I'm more than happy to reiterate this in another video, so ask away. So here we are in Fusion. I'm gonna import a couple of files. So I, I need some canvases to start these drawings out. So um, it's a simple feature here. We just select upload. We select the files we want. I have them in a file here in my download folder and we upload them. This does a couple of things for us. It puts them up in the cloud. So when I share this file, um, when I share the archive file, they're there for other users to see. And it puts all of your information in the same place, which I think is pretty useful. So the next step, we've got an untitled file here. So we're gonna save this as single neck headless lap steel. There we go. Um, we're ready to start bringing these canvases into the drawing and start getting them to size. But before we do that, you know, what is the size we're going for? Um, we're not going to be using these images as absolutes. We're kind of, they're just kind of references, but you have to have something to reference them against. So my first step is to start with the scale length of the instrument. And to do that, I've created myself a little uh, add-in to Fusion 360. If you're a Patreon member, this is included with Patreon membership for $1 a month. So there's a lot of stuff in there. It's a pretty good deal in my opinion. So this fret spacing calculator is just one of those tasks that I did over and over again. And I thought this was something that would be really good to automate, make this task really quick and easy. It gives me the basics that I need for a fretboard and all of my fret slots right there. Lap steel doesn't have red slots, but still has markers, right? So we're going to need these lines. It's a good place to start with. So um, it's asking for first scale length. I'm going to go with a very traditional scale length. On the previous uh, lap steel, I was a little bit shorter than 23 inches. I'm going to go 23 inches on this one. Um, so I have my fret spacing constant here. This is kind of a standard. You can change this if you're doing like a historical instrument. And you want to replicate uh, historically what was happening. Um, in today's world, uh, for making an instrument that plays in tune, this is the value that you want to keep it at. And that's why I have this check mark to keep it kind of. You can change it. You can change it if you need to, but that's pretty much what you're going to use. Um, number of frets. I'm going to put this way up at 30, not 320. I'm going to put this way up at 30. So we're not really seeing our changes here. So one of the cool things that I like about this, if we make our origin here, I like to do my drawings on the XY plane, which is this one right here. You can see I've got top facing up. And then I'll select this XY plane and this will give me these drawings and I can actually manipulate these in real time, which is kind of a cool thing. So if this was at 24, 
we'd see 24 frets right there. But I actually want 30 frets. Um, that's more than I need, but it's going to be good to have them. Um, this is a lap steel, so the nut and the bridge are going to be the same dimension. Um, I'm going to go with 3.5 on both of these, which is more than I need. I'm going to extrapolate the sketches that I actually need from this, but this gives me a kind of like the layout that I need to get started. So there we go. We've got that. I'm going to look at that from the top. So you can see here we've got this. Now we're ready to import a canvas. So super simple process, just like everything else so far. Um, we're going to insert canvas, and I think I'm going to use this Grady Martin double neck. Um, that's what I designed the original instrument after, and I kind of want that same look. So it's asking for a face to put it on. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of get this thing close because I'm just using this as reference. I'm not using this as any kind of a absolute value. So I'm just going to kind of get this in as a reference, like about where I want it like that. Now, if you wanted to make these look a lot more um, accurate, like so if you knew if you looked up in the, you know, like the the uh, Bigsby book that uh, that I have, that it's an awesome book, get that one if you don't have it. But um, you looked up the scale length and you wanted to replicate this exact scale length. You can just go here into canvas, right click on and then select calibrate. And this will let you select two dots um, at the bridge in there. And so if this was 24.5, now you have that there. Now there's still going to be some kind of image distortion, but that's a really good starting point. Um, for me, I'm going 23 here and I'm actually going to change the I'm really just looking at this body shape, how this is fitting into my fretboard. So, and I'm gonna actually modify that some more, but that's for the next video. This is kind of just the starting point. This is kind of how I get started. If you have any questions about the process, if you have anything that you think um, I can extrapolate on some more, please let me know. Um, I think this is gonna be a really cool series. I think it's gonna provide a lot of information for you guys. If you wanna see more about how this stuff looks after I'm finished with the project, join the Patreon group. Um, there's a ton of stuff there. I'm always happy to help anyone who's struggling there. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.